<laughs> you trying to get it ready? Wait. <laughs> G -A -G. So you know what? G -A -G. It, it, uh, hey, you guys. <laughs> This is Tony. That is Tim. We are TNT, and we are live again on another Tuesday for truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And uh, right. we're going to give you guys a minute to jump on, but we're going to keep talking so that when I download this as an MP3 and upload it on a podcast, you got something to listen to. <laughs> but, dude, how you been, bro? How's the road? I'm good, man. I'm on I-10 and, and cruising for a bruising. No, I'm just kidding. That's what my dad used to say when I was in trouble. Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> no. I've been in trouble. I'm actually doing doing all right. And, uh, man, I don't even know why I said that. And I haven't said that in like 10 years or 12 years, to be honest. Yeah. But. Shout out to Lydia. Good uh, evening to you. She says, what's up, brothers? What's up, sis? We are good. Um, it's another Tuesday. We're going live, but it's not just another Tuesday. Obviously, it's Election Tuesday, and we know that. We're not oblivious to that, uh, but we are going to praise God through that. We are going to talk a little bit of politics because it is what's going on. But more importantly, our message today is in God we trust. And uh, it's something that was near and dear on Tim's heart and on, on my heart as he was talking about trusting the Lord. And then all of a sudden I heard, in God we trust. And that's what we're rolling with. And we're going to let him direct us and lead us. So, yeah, Lydia, Jesus is the elect. Absolutely. I see that. So, uh, bro, um, just so everybody knows, um, just a precursor. Um, it might be a little loud here and, uh, we're going to wing it and go with it. We're having a little, uh, house party, uh, election party, Jesus party. We're just kind of all getting together. So I got Silas just jumping in here right now. So you're going to get a lot of, you're going to get a lot of, uh, background people, uh, on here and you might be hearing some stuff. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. And, uh, Aaron's going to be jumping on with me here soon. Yes, fam. I see you, Ro. I see you, Lydia. I see you. And uh, take a minute to share. And Tim, do you have a good connection there or are you chopped up right now? Are you broken up? It seems like you're broken up. Yep. All right. Tim will be back with us in a minute. <laughs> we'll just keep going. And uh, I got Aaron cooking right now. Um, and uh, it's just so good to be with you guys. And we're going to... Uh, to honor everybody's time and to honor everybody's what they're doing as far as election and all of that and with your family and friends and whoever um, I, we won't try to take up too much of your time we're going to keep it under an hour hopefully uh, unless the Lord says otherwise so <laughs> but we're going to try to keep it uh, to a minimum today as we get ready let me just show you guys what we got going on here I got some uh, some burgers I patty those up put some onions on there I got the guys back here so say shout out that's Jeff there's Silas. There's uh, Aaron. Yep. So we're all cooking here. We're getting ready to grill it up and uh, having our little house party here as we uh, – is it Trump or is it uh, – hey, if Trump don't win, we'll be Biden in the vine. We'll be Biden in the vine. <laughs> so we'll, that was from Tim. Tim actually shared that with us. He And that, that wasn't uh, – that didn't come from him. That came straight from the father because we, we were like, what the world? Tim, you back? I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm here. <laughs> all right, I was just telling them your joke about, hey, if, if Trump don't win, we'll be all abiding in the vine. <laughs> so so abiding in the vine, that's what uh, Tim, and Tim didn't get that by himself. That came from the father, straight from the father. <laughs> Tell you one thing, I, I, I like coming up with uh, puns and, uh, and witty, witty things to say, but randomly yeah. things has come to me it was kind of funny uh earlier but yeah but yeah yeah uh while i have some con connection i might share a little bit about what guys have put on my heart all right well before we do that you want to lead us in a word of prayer now that you're back on here yeah why don't you why don't you pray so that when i talk i don't run out of air yeah you know what? <laughs> I asked you, you were gonna say that i said you know what he's gonna volley this right back to me <laughs> Oh, man. All right. 
Oh, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are so worthy, Father God. Thank you that we can still have fun and come to you just in excitement and enjoy. But we can just come to you and just praise you and just worship you. And Father, though we have an idea of what we want to say, we're just going to share what's on our hearts. So, Lord, if there's anything in particular that you want us to speak from you, obviously speak it to our hearts so that we can speak it to everybody else. We're just here as vessels, just willing vessels to share your word. And Tim and I are not leaders. We are servants. The way we lead is by serving. So, Father God, as servants of, of truth and servants of your word, we just pray that you would just share what you want to share through all of us. Anybody that jumps on camera on this video and shares that it comes from the heart of you, Lord, not from us, but from the heart of you and that we share your heart. Um, give us a timely word and uh, give us a challenging word. And yes, Father, just just give us your word and nothing more than your word. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> all right, dude, wherever Tim has his phone, the camera's bouncing all over the place. Yeah, Bug, um, he's driving, and it's on a little thing, and since he's on the road, he's going... <laughs> so he's going to be bouncing a little bit. So uh, if, if the best way to remove the bounce when you're watching Tim is when you're watching Tim and watching the video, you start bobbing your head, too, and it kind of goes away. See? It goes away. I see Tim. I see Tim. I see Tim. All right. Oh, that's funny. Well, hey, uh, I wanted to start off uh, this tonight with a little story. Um, last night, God, uh, had, you know, he asked me to go spend time with my son, and so my son came okay. and sat on my lap, and I was I was in a recliner, and I never I never liked to get in recliners because I felt like that was me being lazy. Yeah, you know. I hey, felt like that was quick, me, Tim. like Tim, real quick. Um, just so I can put this out there for everybody, um, because I don't think I think you guys are only hearing mostly what's coming in because I'm closest to the, the to the audio. I just want to confirm with you guys that you can mostly hear Yeah, me why don't why don't you why don't you turn off your mic when you're not speaking and I'll do the same. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Perfect. Good job, brother. All right, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, what ended up happening was last night, my son, uh, he came and sat on my lap in the recliner and, and, you know, God asked me to go sit in the recliner with him. And I said, well, I don't like sitting in recliners. It makes me feel lazy. You know, it makes me feel like I'm not doing anything. And so what I ended up doing was sitting there and deciding to relax for once, you know, and, and God speaks to me and says, Hey Tim, I want you to, uh, I want you to turn on Jonah. And I said, what about Jonah? And he said, I want you to turn on Jonah. I want you to turn on uh, a film about Jonah. And I said, I don't know which one to pick. And he said, just pick any of them. So I picked one that I saw on YouTube, and I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. And then God spoke this to me. He said, don't forget the mission. And I'm sitting here in, in this recliner with my son, and, and I'm helping put him to sleep. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And I started listening to this video about Jonah. And um, if any of you know the story of Jonah, Jonah... Had a, had a mission that he was called to. And in that mission, Jonah outthought God's mission for him. He realized, you know what? I don't like that. I don't, wow. I don't like that mission. I don't, I don't want to go to people that could kill me. Like, I don't, I don't want to go there and tell them that God is going to judge their nation. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I don't want to go and, and share the guys going to judge a nation unless we repent. Unless they repent, we as a people. Jesus, you know, and 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 so then 
I start thinking about it, and, and Jonah, his sister walks up to him, and, and she's like, Jonah, don't you know you're a prophet from God? Don't you know that, like, like, don't you know what your calling is? Don't you know what your mission is? And he said, yeah, I know what my mission is. She goes, okay, well, are you going to do it? And he goes, no, I'm not going to die. She said, well, what are you going to do? And he said, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to uh, the opposite end of the, the world. <laughs> and so he does that. And, and, and the long story short, everyone knows the story about Joni. He gets thrown off. A, a, a whale swallows him. And all of a sudden, something clicks in my mind. Something clicks in my mind, Tony. Okay, go ahead. Jonah gets swallowed by the whale. And at that moment, God speaks to me again. And he said, hey, Tim. Jonah didn't know he was going to live. So Jonah was afraid to go die to share God's message, wow. but ultimately, no matter which way he took, there was a death threat for his life. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. One produced life. One produced humility. And it, it's not much. It's not much for you and I to guess which one caused humility. Wow. I'm in a fish. I don't know. I, I mean, it's not like Jonah knew the end of the story. It's not like it's not like Jonah knew that he was gonna live and get spit out of the whale. It's not like Jonah knew anything. It's not like Jonah called his mom. It's like, yo, mom, I'm in this whale for like three days. It sucks. Like, it's not even like you're in prison. It's worse than prison. You're in a whale, dude. Like. Bro. He didn't even he didn't even see the wheel pop up in front of him and, and swallow him and God didn't even say, Hey, it's okay, I'm gonna send the wheel. Like he didn't know anything, but Bro. he knew Bro, you even said the word earlier to me, the unknown. He was swallowed by the unknown. Dude, that's he was swallowed. He he was so out of his comfort zone bro that bro. he's in this battle and it's pitch black and all he hears is just water swooshing around that's it that's all he hears and, for, and god says tim i want you to put yourself in his shoes yeah i said okay and he said how many times have i isolated you because you wanted to walk in your own knowledge of who i was Wow. I said, a lot of times. He goes, exactly. And he goes, Tim, what if you actually did what I called you to do? Right. What if I what if what if I had a plan that was better than plan B, but you always chose plan B because you didn't see the outcome. Right. And and so I started my, my wheels started spinning and spinning. And and then God started speaking to me more and more and more throughout this film. And, you know, ultimately, God started teaching me, Tim, for you to abandon your calling from me is for you to abandon your purpose here on life. Mm. Right. You know, and, and, and it's like it's like so many of us are like, man. I'm going to get to that, Jesus. And we treat his calling, we treat his voice like a chore. Oops. You know, we, we, put, we put the mission we put the mission on the to-do list. You know, we can easily put his mission not on priority, but on a to-do list. And we say, well, I'll get to that when I'm done with this, when I'm done with this. And they may be good things, but they may not be his best for us. And so I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight. But it's time for you to breathe and to do what God has said. Wow. It's not time for you to overthink what's going to happen. 
It's not time for you to make plans. It's time for the Lord to determine your path. Yeah. Say and that I believe whoever you. is on right now, it's your chance to say no. I believe whoever is on right now, it's time for you to say yes to God's path and no to your plans. Wow. You know, because you your pathway is created by you. His pathway is created by him. And the moment we say yes to him, we are saying yes to his path. And if you think about a king and his kingdom, if you take the pathway to that kingdom, guess where you go? To the kingdom. If you take a pathway, an alternative route, I'm going to be I'll be straight with you. It says that his pathway is straight and narrow. So there's a way and there's not a way. Like, it's not that all pathways lead to him. That's not true. I'll tell you why. Because there's no back roads to heaven. There's only one way, and that way is Jesus. Amen. And there's only one purpose for you, and that purpose is to follow him. And yes, you may be able to share him in different ways than others, and you might have different uh, places that God calls you to, but your purpose and your calling is to Jesus. And I don't know why many of us have not chosen him, but the only thing that I could come up with in my studying of his word and my, in my prayer time with him is that fear causes trembling and we either tremble before the presence of god or we tremble in the presence of men wow wow, wow. and well, i just want to say it's time that we return to the throne it's time that we return to the prayer and the humility and humbling ourselves to the point where we are trusting that his way is our way and I believe the pathway will make itself straight in front of us. I'm going to mute right now. Um, there, you know, you were saying what you were saying. I was thinking about how work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Jesus. You know, and then I was also thinking about how you were talking about a way. And, and isn't it something how. Wow. Well, Sorry, I got disconnected. Um, I got to pick up that call. Sorry, guys. I already uh, pre-warned you. And we're just, you know us. We're not going to be, we're not religious about any of this stuff. So we're just rolling with it. We're having a good time here. We're having fellowship with amongst other believers. And we're breaking bread together, having an awesome meal here soon. We're prepping. So uh, thanks for bearing with us. And uh, it's awesome. And we're going to have other people jump on here with me. But, you know, when I heard you speak, Tim, I heard you talk about a way. And I said, you know what? There's a way that seems right to a man but it still leads unto death because it's not the way. It's not the way, which is Jesus. It's not the truth. It's not the life. It's a way. It's a way that seems right to most people. It's a way that's like, oh yeah, you know what? We can go this way and it's going to be all right. You know what though? It seems right, but it's still leading unto death because it's not Jesus. It's not the way. There is only one way to the father and everybody's trying to go a way, another way, another back road, like you just took some back roads, you know, to, to get around to another place. And we're trying to do that with life, not realizing that the life we live is a life in him. It's the only way. And it's the only way to the father is through Jesus. He literally is the doorway. He is the door. He is the good shepherd. And he's the one that's leading us into green pastures from here to here to here and to the next. But, bro, I, I love what you shared about Jonah and, and, and everything there. That, that, that was, I never really, I never really, it's like, it, it's always been a story that you hear, but it's true. It's like, yeah, he, it's not like he got a memo. Hey, you're going to get swallowed by this whale and you're going to be in, this, in the stomach of this whale for X amount of time. Like, that never really dawned on me. Like, think about that. That sounds outrageous. That sounds unbelievable. But, um. Wow, that yeah, amazing, amazing. And, and and you know the thing, the thing is, it's it's so drowning me about God's love is the fact that He gives Jonah this purpose to sh to share a you know basically a word of repentance. 
Yeah. And repentance. Yep. And you know what? Like he ended up sharing that, but then God said, "No, no. Like I want you to share compassion. I want you to share forgiveness." And I'm seeing this correlation between Jesus. How like Jesus is all God, all man. And so yes, he knows that there's judgment for the unbelievers. But he's like, you know what? I'm going to share compassion. I'm going to share love. That is the gateway to heaven. Love and compassion. And so what I'm seeing right now throughout our nation is a lack of compassion. It's, 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 it's so much judgment. That it, it's scary for me to see the way that we judge one another. And I heard a song earlier that says, When I look into the face of my enemy, I see my brother. It says, When I look into the face of my enemy, I see my brother. brother. I see my brother. And I'm, sit I'm sitting here thinking, you know what? They not may not my uh, those who are our brothers or our enemies may not be a brother in Christ, but they are a brother in Yeshua in in in, uh, in Yahweh. They are a brother in Jehovah. They may have not accepted Jesus yet, but many 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 people do believe in God or a higher power, and, right. and they do believe in creation, but they just don't believe in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Or in the Holy Spirit that God gave us. And so when I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, dude, God already did the first step for us. He already created man in his image. So guess what? He already set us up for success to, to share the good news about the next two steps. Jesus and Holy Spirit inside of us. Like he already set us up. He already put forth that 10%. You know, we already put forth every single thing that we need in front of us. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for to love our brother? What are we waiting for to love our neighbor as ourselves? What are we waiting for to have compassion upon the one that did wrong to us? What are we waiting for? You know, what are we waiting for when he says, hey, I need you to stay in the United States and I need you to share the love of God. It's like, no, man, I'm called to the nations. I'm called to the Philippines. I'm called to Mexico. I can't even minister here because no one gets me. You know, I got to like, go on and on and on. And I'm not going to go on about that. I'm going to tell you this, and it's time. It's time. You know, it's time that we so say, time. yes, God. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know what else. I don't know what else you have to say, Tony. But I want to. I just want to be. I want to be in this place where I don't say anything outside what the Holy Spirit's asking me to say, and I believe that's that's the majority of it. That's it there for you. Okay. Um, yeah. No. Thanks for your obedience in that, and um, that's what we prayed about. Um, is just saying His words. So I mean, if you feel like you're at a stopping point, then um, so be it. Yeah, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear what God is putting on your heart about. Trusting Aaron. in him. I think I'm going to bring Aaron on. I believe Aaron's got something on his heart that he really wants to share. What are we talking about? It doesn't matter. As long as whatever God's telling your heart, you guys share. <laughs> but Tim's done talking, so he he shared what he needed to share. Um, and I'll get you. I'll get you in on here. Uh, maybe I'll widen it like this. Here we go. Is that oh, better. Nice. Yeah. Um. So we got that. Hey, what's up, it's Misha? I just met her, but she's a sister in the Lord, so it's all good. So, uh, so yeah, that was her. You saw her waving, so that's what's up. Um, and I just want to say shout out to Paulo, bro. I saw you guys on there, Lydia. Please share what you got from the word that Tim just shared just now, as uh, and just please comment on there and just anything that God's really sharing on your heart that you feel that you need to share at this moment. Definitely don't hold back. Put it on the comments so we can discuss it and uh talk about it and um i'm just putting the comments on here now just give me a brief moment uh getting out of our own way and then row like jonah we can't turn from god's plans it's his way so he was talking about jonah and and and, and things like that but i don't want to i don't want to skew what you want to talk about i want you to just flow with what, what god's put on your heart so yeah. um so anyway you guys know aaron snyder this is aaron so take it away brother what's up tim 
I heard you talking about it's go time, and, and so I walked over here. And, nice. Uh, well, yeah. I'm totally down basically, with that. Basically, basically, the summary of what God was putting on my heart, Aaron, was that, you know, it's it's time that we actually do what God is asking us to do because the more delay we have, you know, the more we we are walking outside of his will. And, yeah. and it's like the, the more the moment we think that we know the way is the, is Tony and I were sharing that, you know, it seems right to a man, but it's not right to, to the father. And so if we humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways, you know, he will heal our land. And yeah. I believe, what, you know, maybe you could expound on what it looks like, what you see God doing to heal our land. Yeah, I think... Um... I think, uh, you know, it, it might not be as popular to say it, but I think the president and, and President Trump is a big part of that. And I think, I believe the Lord has put him into office to, to honestly, to show the church how to have some backbone. And uh, I, I think it's go time. I think that it's time for the church to learn how to be a part of the kingdom and to, and to learn how to bring the kingdom to the world. And if Trump gets reelected, which I believe we will, then it's not time to just sit back and relax and let him do all the work. It's time, the Lord wants the church to go and to be the kingdom and to bring him that if Trump wins, it's not the victory. It, it's just paving a way for the church to rise up and be the church. And in the past eight months or so, there's just been a huge separation of the, the wheat and the, and, and the chaff and the, and the goats and the sheep and it's just time for us to know who we are and that, that he made us for a time like this to go and bring his kingdom to the rest of the world. And it's not a time to just sit back and say, yeah, I'm just going to ride the gravy train. And it's, it's, it's time to go be something is what I'm saying, Tim. And at, for everybody, that's going to look different. Whatever the Lord has, uh, the gifting that the Lord's put in your life, that whatever it's, it's on us to spend time with the Lord. And I was telling, uh, uh, Tony and I have been spending a lot of time together today and I was telling him, you know, a lot of people try to go into ministry and they try to become something and you cannot, you cannot minister to other people until you can minister to the Lord. And we, we have to get into a place where we, where he is first and we understand that he has set us free from our past. He has cleaned us out and we can go to him. We can approach his inner court. We can spend time with him without any guilt, shame or condemnation. And then say, Lord, because you've set me free, you know, I, I just want you uh, to, I, I want your, your presence to rest on me. But in order to wow. do that, I need to spend time with the Lord and I have to minister to him. And when I do minister to him, he, his spirit comes on me and there's an overflow. There's an outpouring that where, where the gifts of the spirit just start to come out of me and minister to other people. And, and the place that the, the, the Lord has called the church during this time, this shutdown, if you will has been for the, his people to get alone and to get rid of themselves and to just to separate from the things that we depended on before the church or our careers or our retirement plans or whatever that is, and just be alone with our families and him and get our priorities straight so that we can say, you know, Lord, I just need you. I need you during this time. Or if, if your time with this, this past time was good or bad, the confrontation that we're going through right now politically is just a manifestation of what's happening spiritually. And so, so it's not going to stop after the election. It's, it's going to continue. There's going to continue to be resistance. And there's a requirement on the church now to go and bring the gospel and to, and to confront the demonic. So to go along with that real quick, I'm going to just chime in with some of the things he just said there and then I'll throw it back to Aaron. Um, but that's what I saw as well, what he was talking about. When, when, when Corona hit, when COVID hit, it actually brought on the fear and it actually what it did for people is actually showed everybody's true foundation right what was your true foundation was it really on faith or was it you thought it was on faith and it was on fear and it was built on the 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 going to church you know you know what i'm talking about going to church doing all these things uh our worship time was only praise and worship doing for God, you know, and then in the car, we're arguing with our spouses and saying, oh, I don't want to eat there. I want to. And we're looking nothing like Christ. And but we're all hail King Jesus. And then we're yelling at each other. And it's like, 
And then COVID hit and it just re- it just showed us our true foundation. And if we're honest, we found out those that were their, their, their houses being built on the rock and those that are built on the sand. And, and, and the fear just grew heavier and heavier and heavier for those that were living in that. And I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just sharing the obvious. And I know every single person that's on here has seen this, whether it's in their life or those around them, because it's been very obvious to see. And then, so that's the the threshing floor that we talked about. Then the other aspect, so that's happening. Now there's no excuses. Now there's lockdown. Now you can spend more time with Jesus. Now you can spend more time with your brothers and sisters. Now you can, there's literally no excuses. Yep, there's no church, there's no this, but you know what? Jesus is still there. The King of Kings, the risen King is still there and he is vying for your attention. And I, he's like, what are the excuses now for my children? For I am here, I am here. And, and, and that's what I what I saw during this time, and I kind of lost uh, my, my train of thought real quick. But but that's what I saw as far as as as, as the fear, and there was something else you just said, and I can't remember what it was now, Aaron. Um, it'll come back to me. I don't. I won't hold it up. But I want I want him to expound on what he was getting ready to go into with. Um, and real quick, before actually we go further, Lydia said the exact same thing before even Aaron said it. Lydia already posted this comment going to what, what Tim was saying and just showing you how God is saying the same message. For those who have ears to hear, you're hearing what the Lord is saying. And she writes, we have an assignment and there's no time to delay the works of the Lord. Mm-hmm. You see, we have the assignment and that's the word of the Lord. She was sharing it and somebody else agreed as well. She, you know, great word. Thanks for sharing. And. This is where we're at, and, and now I want to throw it back to Aaron so he can highlight that word because it's, 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 it's also political, but it's political because it's spiritual. It's ushering in what needs to happen next, but yeah. go ahead. Well, I mean, just as you were saying that, I opened up my Bible app to go somewhere else, but what pulled up was Ephesians 5, uh, 15, yeah. and it says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, what the will of the Lord is. And um, don't be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody of the Lord, giving thanks to God, our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Submitting, yep. So it. It says, see that we don't walk. You know, it's, you know, it's interesting. Uh, and, and that doesn't even mean that the, that the I'm Lord really catching the, the. I'm really interested in the fact of the last words that you said, submitting to one another. And yes. you know what's so interesting is, is that the biggest issue America has had, I would say, is submission to one another. We've all tried to prove how good we are and how great we are in our media in our movies and our, you know, we've let pride elevate ourselves above God and we haven't submitted to one another in love. You know, we haven't confessed our sin one to another so that we can grow together as a body, Mm -hmm. you know? And and I think that word submit really hit me was the fact of, dude, if we submit to one another, guess what happens? If arms submits, Guess what? If the arm submits to the head, guess what? The Ooh. arm's going to move with the head. Whatever the head needs, body, the arm's going to move. But if the arm says, no, I'm an arm. Look at how amazing I am. Look at, look the, at my big arm. Look at my look arm. Look at my, oh, yeah, my yeah, like we, Silas. you know, we. Silas, show like, your gun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, yeah. dude, legit. Like, we you have to submit to the head. Down here. Yeah, bro. No, I was, I was about to talk about that, Timmy, so that's awesome. But Woo! it's like I, I was saying it's not even a lot of people use that verse in context to like the end times, but it's just about your life because the Lord's put gifting and callings inside of us that we only have a lifetime to do. Correct. So it, uh, it's our responsibility to take what the Lord's given us and spend time mm-hmm. with him so he can he can anoint the gift that's on our life by us submitting to each other and to him. And what I was talking about, I was going, I was actually going to read Hebrews 5 where it says that um, look it up. I'll look up. Hebrews 5, you said? Yeah, I, I got it right here. Okay. It says, For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer gifts and sacrifices for sins, so he can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. 
Because of this, he is required for the people and also for himself to offer sacrifices for sins. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called of God, just as Aaron was. And so what that basically means is that a lot of people try to minister to other people when they have not cleaned themselves. They haven't. It says that obviously all men are subject to weaknesses, but people who are able to minister to other people have been anointed by God because they recognize that they need to be clean themselves and they need to come under the blood and deal with situations in their life. They need to deal with things they're struggling with and put it under the blood of Jesus and get healing and delivering. And we need to help each other get delivered and we need to help each other get healed. And we just speak and encourage each other to, to raise each other up to the point Jesus. where when somebody needs something, when I see someone that has a need, I can say, the, you know, the blood of Jesus set me free from some, something similar or I know somebody. And, be, and because of that, I have compassion for that need and I know that they can be set free. And, and based on that, that's the only way that the, the love of God can actually work through me to minister to that person. Hmm. And, and, and the priests back in, in the Levitical priesthood, they, before they were able to offer sacrifices for the people, they had to make a sacrifice of, of a bull and a goat, and they had to cleanse themselves before they were able to minister a, a, a sacrifice for the people. And, and there's a requirement on us to hold ourselves accountable to a standard so that the, the Spirit of God, so we can be clean, and the Lord can speak in us and minister the gifts of the Spirit through us for other people. So that's that's really been on my heart lately, but there's... There's a there's a, a time and I believe the time is now for us to to just be seeking wow. the Lord, obviously, but it's it's just go time and the Lord needs us to be something for other people. It's time to take this country and the world for the Lord. And I believe a lot of people are going to be moving. I believe a lot of people are going to be sent out in this next year. And and but there's this time that we have right now, and, and this time has been for being set apart and being pruned. Yeah. Because he That's loves us and, and just holding each other accountable. I mean, Come the people on, we church. run with, Come on, church. the people we run with, we <laughs> need to hold each other accountable. We need to hold each other to a standard. Real quick, I just want to throw this in there because the comment, this came in earlier. Lydia was sharing that exact thing that just Aaron saying. I just love when God just speaks to all of our hearts saying the same thing. And here's what Lydia wrote yeah. just three minutes earlier, or five minutes earlier. Hey, the Lord is pruning. Mm -hmm. There's no condemnation here, but God prunes and it hurts, but it's growth. Yep. And God wants us to stop fearing and only fear him yep. to be in awe of him. And Amen. Lydia, what I like what you said about that is that there's no condemnation here. Yeah. Because, I mean, it says confess Jesus. your sins one to one another to that another. you may be healed. And so we're not to we're not to we're not here to condemn. We're here to exhort and to uplift. But we have to understand that th there's power in the blood and the power in the blood is for healing. It's not to continue in the status quo. It's to get delivered and set free. So we don't have that issue anymore. Yes. I mean, so, so he froze. So what I want to touch on is I, I want to hear what God, what God has revealed to you both about accountability, because too many times we try to take matters in our own hands. And if for accountability, we think we are the vine dresser and we start trying to prune everybody. Right. right. And, and so how do we stay in a place where we're not trying to prune people, but we're actually being compassionate, being the way that you're speaking about, but also stay accountable to one another. How, how would you guys, how would you guys say I that believe, for those who have that, who have yeah, not experienced true pruning from the Holy spirit or from God? Yeah, um, that, or, that, you know, I, I understand totally what you're saying because that's what I was reading. And uh, if you read Hebrews four, it talks about the believe Jesus rest. came and died for us because he was as a man and he dealt with all of the sin and he dealt with all the temptations that we deal with, but he was perfect and none of that, he, he resisted it and, and he was perfect. But because he lived as a man, he understands what we go through and he has compassion and mercy for us so much so that he died to set us free from all of that. So therefore, because of that, we who have been set free by the blood need to walk in that remembrance of what we have come out of and so when we do that, when we, when we live in that attitude of thankfulness, it brings the spirit of compassion on us. And a lot of times yeah. when you see Jesus in the Gospels, he heals somebody. Very often it says he was moved with compassion or he felt love for somebody and he healed them. And so that's why Hebrews 5 says that uh, a high priest taken from among men is appointed for 
people, four men, that he may offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. And that may be that may be praying for somebody or fasting for somebody, or they call you and they say, hey, I've got an issue I need help with, I need advice. And, and we pray and, and we can seek the Holy Spirit. Maybe they're in a bad place, they don't get it, or they don't think that they can see it or feel it or hear it. And, and we need each other. And so I might have a gift thing, but all of the gift things are for the help of that person. And, and just the basic act of somebody reaching out for help is repentance in itself that says, I need help with this. I have an issue. Will you pray for me? Will you, yeah. will you fast for me or something like that? I believe that is the power of the gospel and that's the power of community and brotherhood and sisterhood and just being in a place where we can help each other. And that is, that's what makes the body strong. And it's not condemnation, but it's because I was saved from stuff like you're going through or worse that I know that you can be set free as well. Well, and Aaron, something, something that's coming to my mind right now now in regard to what you're saying is is a point that was made earlier that we can't live anymore trying to minister to anyone without first being ministered to and first without going to god and, and, yep. and finding yep. and finding that intimacy with him and yeah. i believe we can't truly bring account we have no right to bring accountable uh anyone accountable to the father you know or we have no right to keep one another in accountability well us first being accountable to the father that's right so tim you were asking that question and and i was waiting because i i didn't have an answer i did and i heard one word and i'm just going to go off of that and then holy spirit will fill in the blanks but what i heard was what you said when you said vine dresser and i believe the goal is why don't we just drown out everything and go to the vine dresser right absolutely First and foremost, like, if I know I'm a vine, I'm going to the vine dresser. Like I'm gonna absolutely go the vine dresser, man. I'll, yeah. Hey, vine dresser, man. Here's my vine. I know I look a little tattered and this and that, man. What do I need to do? And then he speaks to my heart, and he he and I, and I'm telling him I I'm surrendering me, and I'm saying, yeah. Lord, less of me, more of you. Because yes. how can I have more of you if I have if I have more of me? I'm, I'm, I'm going to have less of you. But if I have less of me, I can have more of you. And that's what I want. Mm -hmm. Keep a soft heart. Keep me pure. Keep me holy. I, not because of me, but because of you. You're holy. You're pure. And I want to be like you. You know why? Because yeah. you're the vine dresser. And I'm your wow. vine. And I want you to dress me wow. up the way you've already called me. I want you to dress me up the way you always see me. I want you to dress me up. And, and you know how like our parents would always have our clothes out when we go to ready for school. Here's your clothes. Here's what you're going to wear. And that's what I'm seeing. I'm just seeing the Lord just saying, man, here's your clothes. Here's what you got. It's righteousness. It's cl clothed in righteousness. Here's your robe. Here's your holiness. Here's your here's everything that I have for you. Here's your measure of faith that I've given you. And, and son, well done, my good and faithful servant, because yeah. you've taken the measure of faith I've given you and you've let it grow from faith to faith to faith and thank you that instead of going to another brother and try to uh, give them a word you're coming to minister to me you're coming to me so that i can minister to you so that you're worshiping me with true worship that you're worshiping true worshipers worshiping in spirit and in truth and you're coming to me Amen. first your yeah. father and you're saying man crying out to abba father i am you're my daddy i'm your son i am yours you are mine i'm your people let's do this and when you just get in that communion that fellowship with the lord like we're getting ready to eat and break bread with a bunch of believers, not a bunch, but you know, less than 12. But so what? We got we're gonna break bread and 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 eat and just share. And the thing that's be beautiful is that we have the love of God with us. But I believe, like we're all saying, we gotta spend time with the vine dresser. We gotta spend time with the vine dresser, and he's the one that's gonna prune us, and then he's gonna he because our hearts are aligned to him. Now I can have the proper compassion grace and mercy and forgiveness that God bestowed on me, I can extend that there. If we're not having this vertical, how in the world am I going to do it this way? Yeah. There's no way. Right. You can have the vertical so you can go horizontal and, and, and share that love. Because that's why, that's why scripture doesn't make sense to some people when they say, how the heck am I going to love my enemy? Because you're just not spending time with the vine dresser. You're just not understanding that your enemy is your brother, like the song Tim was singing earlier. Well, you know what's so interesting to me that when you look at somebody, you have to say, how does the Lord see that person and how does the Lord want that person re restored instead of judging them for their actions? And uh, Ro yep. Perez, I'm assuming a relation to you. You're, okay, Tony's mom said, 
Uh, scroll, down. scroll down. Yeah. She said, uh, abide in me and I in you. And right after that, John says that to who the Lord loves okay. and who is producing fruit, he prunes and he, he cuts us so that we produce more fruit. So pruning and having issues and getting healed of issues is, a, is growth. It's not condemning. You're not falling backwards. You're actually advancing and you're becoming more like Jesus. And when we become more like Jesus, we have more of him in us to minister to other people. Correct. And, and so that the whole concept is very simple, but uh, I don't know if anybody is into rose bushes or crepe mowers or anything like that, but in the springtime, when you prune those buggers back, they they just blossom. They, they usually go three or four times, whatever you cut off. And so the concept is the same thing. Wow. The, DNA of, is the, the DNA of the kingdom is the same, whether it's plants, animals, people, reproduction is the same. And so we're reproducing Jesus in us by surrendering to him and less of us and more of him. Yeah. And, and that's it. And that, and that's the key, the whole, and Tim will be back. It looks like he, uh, his connection got mm -hmm. uh, messed up there, but, but again, uh, what Aaron was saying about abiding and, and when we abide in him, we, we are naturally walking by the spirit, living by the spirit and walking by the spirit. And when we do those things, the fruit is the byproduct. Yeah. It's not something that we're working towards to do. It just happened because yeah. we're abiding in Jesus. Jesus is the fruit. He's he's all of that. Mm -hmm. So when we just continue to abide in him and walk in the spirit, live by spirit, now the fruit's there that people can just grab and say, taste and see that the Lord is good. They can see the kindness on Aaron. They can see, you know, uh, whatever fruits that he's bearing. And you're just letting people pick the fruit right, right. off of you. And, and you just go on from right. there. And then uh, Lydia says, spending time with God yeah. is the way to go. And it's not only spending time with him, because a lot of people, they sit in the closet <laughs> and they get religious or they do something and nothing ever happens. But it's when we minister to the Lord and when we say, Lord, I, I appreciate you and I'm thankful for you. If you never do another thing for me in life, I appreciate what you've already done for me. And, and, and Lord, I just thank you and I appreciate you. And Lord, right. change me and, and show me how, how, what you need for me. And then when you ask for that and you, and you come to him with humility, he just pours down his heart onto us. And, and when we go to him, not wanting anything but to be more like him, there's something so special that happens because it's in the state of surrender that he just pours his love on us. And with that love comes compassion, all the fruits of the spirit. And then it allows us to, when, the, when we have the fruits of the spirit, we go straight into the giftings of him and the giftings are for other people. Wow. Yeah, I kind of feel I kind of feel like the Lord is is bringing those who have been stuck in the closet or those who have been stuck in the in the prayer houses out. And right. those who have been stuck in on the stage into the prayer closets. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like if you you know yeah. My, hey, my Tony, wife and there's I. There's a lot of huh. people that are, that are in the prayer closet that don't want to come out. And that's part of, hey, I'm a little guilty of that. Okay. I, I don't like doing this whole thing. Well, sometimes it's a little safe. It's more comfort yeah. there. But see, when we it, step out, you and the Lord, we step out in uncomfortable situations, the comforter can come. And that's why it's so important yeah. to step out in those uncomfortable situations. What, what, about, what about the scripture that says that he will go with us in our going in and going out? Yeah. Yeah. What about that scripture? It says that he will bless us and he'll be with us in the going in and the going out. And yeah. in, in that scripture, I'm, I'm really seeing that, you know, in those days in the Old Testament, this was written in the Old Testament, they would go into the Holy Holies and they would come out. And so we have to believe that when we go into solitude with God and God separates us and puts us in places where it's just him and us, uh, almost like Moses you know, where God yeah. puts him in the desert again for 40 years. You know what I mean? Right. And then he pulls him out, and then he puts him back in the desert again. You know, he would go in, and he would go out. He would go in, and he'd go out into, and that was his lifestyle. And I believe that, and, and it's the same thing with uh, Daniel, who was the king. You know, he would go into prayer morning. He would go out, and then he'd go back to prayer at noon, and then he'd go out, and then he'd go back to prayer at night. And then he would sleep, and then he'd wake up, and it was an everyday lifestyle of in and out, and in and out, and in and out. Not in and out of the presence of God, but in and out of that, you know, 100% um, solitude with God. And I believe the only thing that keeps us away 
from going back into solitude or coming out of solitude is one thing, and it's fear. Fear that we don't know what to say. Like Moses, he needed Aaron. He didn't know. He's like, I don't know what I'm going to say because he's been in the wilderness for so long. He hasn't been talking to a bunch of people. He's been out there by himself. God, I don't know what I'm going to say. I haven't talked to people in this many years. I, 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 I mean, the, the stutter. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I, I, I just talked to, I, I talk to sheep. A lot of people in the last 10 months, they've been in a wilderness and they've been separated. And that's good because they've been so lonely and they've had all their distractions removed. And so they, they have to address themselves and they have to face the facts. And the facts yes. have been that they once they're separated from some of their people and they've been separated from their churches, they don't have anything. And, and they're dry and they're empty. And people during this time have learned how to go to the Lord and say, like, what is like, I, I don't I'm not what I thought I was. I, 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 I depend on my other family. I depend on my friends. I depend on my church. And I have not had and, and, and we need to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I have not. I, I have not. I have let you go. I have not been what I should have been to you and learn to minister back to the Lord. And what you're and what Daniel did, what you're talking about, Tim, is Daniel ministered to the Lord all the time. He was worshiping the Lord. And when the time mm -hmm. came, the king called on him. He was ready and he was ready to die because he had been in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Moses was ready to die. Yes. And, and they, cause they saw the face of the Lord and they said, Lord, you have to purify me. And they stayed in that place. Wow. Of humility. And that's why when, when Hebrew says that we're to be a high priest, for ourselves and other people, it means that we better be clean under the blood. We better be living in a repentant state like, Lord, you show me what I need to change because I want to be holy. And I, I need you to show me because the people that I'm around, like, uh, who was that? That, that was uh, Elijah that said, right? Yeah. That said, uh, Jeremiah, no, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, he said, my lips are unclean. Right. He, he, he was worshiping the Lord and he was having problems. The Lord, the Lord spoke to him and he said, Lord, he saw the Lord revealed himself to him. And he saw that the people, the other prophets and the people he was with, they were, he said, Lord, we are unclean. We are unclean. And it said, and because that repentant, he was repentant right there. And an angel took a coal out of the fire and came down and touched his lips and made him holy. And then he was able to speak the word of God and save the people. But it takes us going into that place saying, Lord, change me. I am, I am. If we mess up, we just go to that. We go to him and we say, I need you to clean me. I need to repent. I need to, I need you to make me holy again. And and it's living that lifestyle of repentance. Not that we want to sin all the time at all, because we're we can get above that, but to be able to minister to the Lord, we need to be clean. And that's why the priests had to purify themselves first yeah. before they could offer sacrifice. And they had to offer sacrifices for themselves and clean themselves before they could offer sacrifices for the people. And it's the same way today where we have to be clean under the blood. A different covenant, but it's the same concept. We have to be clean under the blood before we can come into the Holy of Holies and minister to him. To just see from him. To just springboard with Aaron, what Aaron's saying there, I, I don't I think sometimes we disregard the importance of repentance. Yes. And we 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 make it so small and minuscule and we make it like a once a month thing or a mm -hmm. once a year thing. And it's and it's not, and I'm not saying it's like every day, oh, I gotta, you know, confess and do these. I'm not saying that. That's between you and God. But I think we've, we've watered down repentance and, and, and we need repentance, obviously turning back to God, but also repentance, changing the way you think. The Greek word menetonoa, change the way you think. And, and, and some of us need to change the way we think. We need to put on the mind of Christ. We need to get out of ours and into his. And, and, and the reason I'm saying repentance is so big is in Revelation, Jesus is talking to John, right? And, and, and they're going to the seven churches and five out of the seven churches, he's talking about repent. So it's got to be pretty huge. And I'm just I'm just forewarning us. Repentance is huge because when we are come to him repented. And I think there's another word that we talked about. We kind of skim over and we talked about it briefly. But confess your sins one to another. You see, when we confess our sins one to another and we come with a repentant heart. Now we're coming together pure holy, blameless, spotless. We are the bride. We are the unity. And we're, we're coming together as one. And we're not hiding anything. You know what that does? You know what that yeah. does, though, Tony? No. It kills all it kills all self-righteousness in the room. Yes, yes. absolutely. It's the, People it's actually get to see. Aware, Timmy, it makes me aware, or it makes you aware, that we're not better than whoever we're trying to minister yes. to. Jesus.
Absolutely. And, that's and, and you know, the, 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 really, the really funny thing is when you start talking about repentance and there's the one guy in the room that, that shares um, on stage every week and, and he goes, you know, I'm good. Like, yeah. I don't got nothing I need to repent from. Okay. That's great, man. You, you cleansed your heart, but, but what about the fact yeah. that... Maybe no. Come what about out. the Maybe fact that... Out. What about the fact that we have to check ourselves in the presence of God? You know, it's not just checking ourselves and seeing if we're good. It's about checking ourselves in the presence of God. There it is. Because you know why, what we've done in the church is we measured ourselves one to another, and we have a barometer with each other, and that's it. So then I'm like, oh, well, I'm better than this guy. I'm better than that one, and that's how we're gauging, yet we're all supposed to be following the standard of Jesus, not the standard of Aaron, not the standard of Tony, mm -hmm. not the standard of Tim or Misha. It's the standard of Christ. Yeah. That's it. End of story. I don't want to hear, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. The yeah, buts are done. The yeah, buts are done. The excuses are done. Are you in transformation or not? Because last time I checked, when you're in, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Once you get to him, he will transform you. You will lose anxiety. You will lose fear. All those things will go. But you got to spend time with him. You got to spend time with the vine dresser so he can dress you the way he's always seen you. Well, that's what we're talking about in Jeremiah. In the beginning of Jeremiah, he, they thought they were Jesus. fine. It says, Thank you, Lord. Uh, Listen to this. Let me read it for a second. Mm -hmm. It says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. And uh, then basically, and he said, Lord, but I'm a youth. And, and he didn't feel qualified, right? <laughs> right, right. And uh, but the, the Lord said, you shall go to whom I will send you. And whatever I command, you will speak. Don't be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you. Give you. Yeah. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and said, I have put words in your mouth. I have this day set you. And so every, every person on the planet has words put in their mouth to, to minister to people. But the problem is, we're, like Tony's talking about right here, we're comparing ourselves to other people. The church is comparing ourselves to other people, and, and that is not the standard, and that is not holiness. The, we can't be on our own. Holiness is only when we say, Lord, I need you. And I, I surrender to you and clean me. And, and boom, that quickly, it, that's restoration right there. And so the, the issue with Jeremiah is he's saying, uh, and <laughs> this is where my problem with looking stuff up comes, <laughs> because I just read it and then I don't know where it is. That's all right. But, but basically, he's talking. and uh, You want a minute? I think it's in three, right? You keep looking. So when I just heard him talking about, about, about holiness, I saw this. I said, I said, well, how do we get holiness when, when we're spending time with God, the father and the blood of Jesus and we're spending time with Jesus and the vine dresser, then the, we're abiding. We're abiding in Jesus. We're abiding in the spirit. The fruits of the spirit are on the Holy Spirit comes on upon us. Right. And that's the spirit of holiness. That's God's spirit of holiness. That's only going to be upon you if you're spending time with you. If you're in the blood, you got to be in Jesus. You got to be abiding in him. That's why he says that. I, I believe when we are abiding in him, there is literally no way when we're abiding in him. We stay covered abiding. Yeah. Correct. But sometimes there, sometimes we get into a place in life maybe where we got out of that place and we something draw happened. Out. Correct. And, and, and we feel far away from the Lord. Correct. And we feel that way because sin separates us from, from Bingo. him. But the problem is that's perception because then the reality of that is that as soon as I say, Lord, I messed up, I need you. Bam. Then there it is. As soon as I admit that, I am I have that. Right back in his from, hand. Right back there. Back and, into and, it, man. And I didn't lose anything. You go right back to go and you collect your $200. Well, what, I was, what, I was telling, what I was telling a friend the other day was that we elevate ourselves above God's hand too many times and the only thing that does that is pride or self-righteousness and the moment the moment that we recognize God's word to be true we'll start we'll start believing it and then taking it as as a lifestyle you know of humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up but the moment we get above his hand we get so high, we get so high above his hand, you know, up here, up here, up here. And all of a sudden, look at me, everyone. Look I've what made I've it. done. I've look made it. I'm, look at yeah. me. I've, grad, I've graduated college. 
I have my pastoral uh, license. I have a doctorate in this. Everybody likes me. All this kind of stuff. All of a sudden, the scripture comes to us and says, Beware of practicing self-righteousness in front of others. Your reward will be given to you. There is no reward for you in heaven. The reward has already been given to you here on earth. And so what I believe, what I believe this in God we trust um, message is all about yeah. is the fact that when we humble ourselves under God's hand, when we come into the presence of God, whatever God is asking of us, whatever he's calling us to, which is himself, he will do what he's asking us to do. Like Correct. it says, he that began a good work in us will finish it until completion. So he will push our bodies and he will, he will lead us on the pathway of righteousness for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through all these trials and tribulations, but guess what? We will be victorious because it is the Lord moving our bodies in the way that he desires. And it's not about what we do. It's about what he's doing through us. That's right. Amen. Can I read? I'm going to read one more thing before I hop off of here. Yeah. But, I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna need to look at my GPS, so I'm gonna have to go. But yep. bless you guys, and Love you, man. I'm on yep. I'm well, on the, I'm right on now. the I'm on the heaven train with you guys. So I'll talk to you yeah. in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Kenny, love you, bro. You the bomb. Love you too, guys. Later, bro. Anyway, what what, what I'm what I was uh, got here is Philippians Good. three, where Paul says, uh -huh. "Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, <laughs> right? But I press on." that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting things that are behind and reaching forward to the things that are ahead. Amen. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And what he's saying is I'm allowing Christ to prune me and to strengthen me to minister to you. And I, and then he goes on and he talks about uh, the rest of the, he basically says, let us as many are as mature, have this mind. And so basically, if we don't have the mindset, we're not mature. And if we think otherwise, it says God will reveal that to us. So never, nevertheless, to the degree that we have attained, let us walk in that level. Mm -hmm. Let us be of the same mind. And so maybe some of us are at different levels and that doesn't matter. We're, we're here to exhort each other, to encourage yeah. each other, to correct each other, to admonish each other, but all out of love so that we can all attain a higher calling in God. Amen. Amen. No, Amen. It's, it's that's so good. <laughs> hey, that, that was. She, she's like, I'm good. All right. So we're gonna wrap up right now. Um, just uh, any final thoughts? I think Aaron shared his final thoughts there. Unless you have a final thoughts. No, no, no. You're good. I don't understand protocol. No, you're good. There's no protocol. That's why we got the burgers cooking. Uh, if I, they actually wrapped up, or else I show a picture picture of them. Hey, if you guys you. want. Yeah. We got. I can come back. I can stir the pot a little bit. Yeah. That help out. Aaron loves stirring the pot. So, hey, I know you guys were challenged. I know you guys were encouraged. Um, I know you guys were loved. I absolutely love the comments. Everybody was saying the same thing at different times, but the Ho Holy Spirit was giving them the same exact word in different ways, and I just love that. So um, we know we're on on track with what God's doing, and uh, we love you guys. There was something I was thinking about, and um, I lost it. I'm seeing if it came, comes back. If not, then we'll uh, wrap up. But, but no. What was that last thing you just said, Aaron? I'm trying to remember what the. Pot. No, no, no. Before stirring the pot, when you were sitting here. Oh, Philippians 3:10. Philippians 3:10. Growing, maturing. Um, but you were admonishing, and you were saying something else. Does anybody remember online? Um, there was something I was provoking gonna... each other, essentially. To love Provo and good provoking works. each other to good works. Love and good works. Uh -huh. Love and good works. Oh, is um, that it? It's love and good works. You can't forget the love because the greatest of these is love. Well, come you, on. Usually good works come out of love. Uh, yeah. My they, experience, so. Yeah, well, let's see. It, it, it was a sponge. Let's see. Everybody said yum, yum, yum. Okay, it was a sponge tonight. <laughs> they were soaking it up. It hey, cooking. soak it up. Soak it up. So um, no, I, they they heard about our burger, so they're like yum oh. yum yum. And then Paul is saying, "Man, oh, that yeah. was, you guys were like, I'm sponging it, you know, taking it all in." So man, thank how, you. How you doing, Tony's mom? She's <laughs> on there somewhere. So 
Yeah, this is, uh, I'm just hanging out. I'm on a road trip and ended up here at Lake City. I know I didn't get to tell you guys. I'm probably figuring out, trying to figure out, well, why is Tony with Aaron? They're like live on location. Yeah. What's going on? Tony's totally supposed that. to be in North Carolina. We got we got Misha here. Yep. She just voted. <laughs> she did. I voted this morning. She's got a dot on her like forehead. Oh, See? okay. That's yes. what's up. Yes. But. Yeah, we got we got a, a, a few close friends here, and so we're just uh, going to actually put this TV on and see what's going on with the election and all that good stuff. But we wanted to still continue on and encourage each other, so we thank you guys for jumping on. And Like Tony said earlier, if what's Trump it? does not win, a Biden in the vine. We'll be a Biden in the vine. I just want you all to know that. That didn't come from, that didn't come from Timmy. That came straight from the father. I'm just saying, if if, Ob if Biden wins, we'll be a, a Biden in the vine. So uh, just a little humor there. But for real, if he does win, we have to abide in the vine. <laughs> just saying. Hey, love you guys. Lydia, thank you for sharing. You're awesome. Thank you for sharing uh, what God's been doing and uh, sharing uh, your heart. God is still in control regardless. And you're absolutely right. I see the little guy back there. Is that Tyler? Or Yep, I got it right. I'm just learning the Tyler and Isaac. I, Isaac and I were playing checkers. And uh, just so you guys know, I already know who's going to win the election. It's going to be Trump. And it's based on a checkers game I had with Isaac. Come over here, Isaac. So Isaac and I, yep, Isaac and I were playing checkers. And uh, you got to come more this way, uh, Tyler, if you want to get in there. There you go. Because um, it's like reverse. Anyways, I'll explain later. Um, so anyways, Isaac and I were playing checkers and Isaac was red. I was black. So I was Biden. He was uh, uh, he was Trump and uh, he beat me in checkers on the last move. So there's a swing state that's going to that Trump's going to get. And that's what's going to put it over the top. So, boom, there you go. It's done. Go go to bed. And uh, Trump's the president for the next four years. So uh, <laughs> anyway, glory to God. I heard him. I heard him. But uh my mom said, thank you, Aaron, for your hospitality. I appreciate it. Also, a shout out to uh, Jeff, because we are actually at Jeff's house right now. Those are his kids, and uh, he's grilling up the burgers, and he hooked us up. So we thank uh, Jeff for letting us into his humble home. So, hey, guys. He might kick you out. That's it. Isn't this beautiful? Guys, this is what heaven's going to be like. It's just all of us hanging out, encouraging one another, fellowshipping with one another. And I just love it. And we're going to go break bread. So you guys go do the same. Sup. And <laughs> so we were going to have communion, I think. I forgot. So we'll just have to have communion here. You guys have communion there. And uh, remember the Lord. I thought I had some last words, but I don't think I do. So I think I'm just going to let it ride out. So, guys, we love you. God bless you. And um, I'll see you next Tuesday. All right, guys. Love you all. You guys ready to eat? I'm ready. Yeah. All right, let's eat. Oh, yeah. We got Gavin here. That's Silas's son. So you say hello and goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, man. Love y'all. God bless. Yeah, we're out of here. Yeah, we did. <laughs> you going to have those patties? That was our sausage patties. Those are good. You'll, you want burger? Okay, burger. Let's eat. Oh, I want to I want grill one. Oh, I forgot to shut off. Hey, take Love y'all. Oh,